Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to CanPom Tutorials. Today we are going to go over preparation and assembly of one of our two misting kits. Here we have our filter that is going to go from your water source before the pump through this filter, then it will attach to the solenoid valve and then we will bring it to the pump. From there we will talk about assembly of all the uh, slip connectors and nozzles for your misting system. We will start at the front of the table with our 10 misting nozzles. In the case of the 20 piece kit, you will have 20 nozzles. We also have nine one-sided slip connectors here. These are what the nozzles will screw into with a line of misting tube on each end. Here we have the end piece. As you can see, there is no end for the tube to go into. Uh, just the one on this end and a spot for the nozzle. This will cap off the end of your line. Here we have the beginning of the line which has a slip connector as well as a 3 8 female. This will be at the beginning on the pump. Here we have our garden hose to half inch. We will go over that in the pump assembly. Here we have our half inch to half inch male threads. This will be to connect the solenoid valve to the filter. Here we have a small ring. This will be where the uh, pressure gauge attaches. Um, you will have one like this on the pump. Uh, but these threads sometimes can be glued in too tight and so won't be able to come out very easily. So we supply you with another one, just in case. And here we have the solenoid valve. This is what's going to control whether water comes in and out of your system. We have a set of wires here just for that solenoid valve. Uh, this we will go over wiring in another video. Over here we have our wrench for the filter. This filter has plastic, we will go over that later. Uh, we must take these off, remove the plastic, and then we can set it up with water. There is a line here. This one will go to your pump, and that will feed the water from your garden hose on the other side of the filter. We are gonna move back over to this side of the table to look at the pump and motor. Uh, these will come pre-assembled in the box. Uh, the only thing we'll need to change is the oil cap, we will go over that later. We also have the dipstick in orange here. Uh, this is the pressure gauge assembly. This ring is the one that you will have to replace if that top cap isn't removable. Uh, very simple, just remove this fitting and then slip it on, put the fitting back on. Here we have the inlet, this is where the water is going to come in from the filter. And this is where our solenoid valve is also going to go, that will control the water coming in. Over here we have the main wiring of the motor with a switch on the other side, on off, uh, as well as the misting tube you see in front of it. This will come in a length of 20 meters and it is very ideal to get at least two to three feet of misting tubing between each set of nozzles. So we give you plenty enough to fill that space as well as make mistakes. As you see we have the pump and filter beside me. This solenoid valve is going to go in between those and control the water coming into the pump. One thing you will need is a length of wire for a standard 110 volt plug that we will wire in today. First things first, we are going to take the screw out of the cap here to expose the wiring. Now that that is unscrewed, we can simply pull this apart and as you can see here, there are the three prongs. These are like a standard plug. You will plug those back in when we're done wiring. For now, we will just disassemble. Make sure you keep everything in an order that you can remember. And we have here the inside of the cover. We will take this cover and any tool you can just to get into that hole and pry it out. Don't worry about damaging it. It comes out fairly smoothly. As you can see here, we have the three spots for our wires. These will be marked with a line one, a line two, and the symbol for ground. Everything should be standard. The wires for line one and two, positive and negative, don't matter which order you put them in, as long as ground is where the ground symbol is. So for now, we will take our cap, we will remove the grommet, and this will expose a washer and an o-ring that we will put onto our wire before we start assembling. Simply use a tool to get those out. As you can see here, metal washer and an O-ring. 
First you will take your grommet that we took off the cover earlier. You will slip it back on, followed by the washer. And then followed by that rubber ring we got out of, out of the cover. Then you will slip the cover over the wires and pull them through like so. Now we will begin wiring the switch. As you can see here from earlier, we have line two, one, and ground. The black and red wires will go to either one or two. Those can be switched as long as the white wire goes to the ground symbol. We'll just make sure that the wires are properly twisted and there are no stray wires hanging out. We will use a Phillips screwdriver to loosen off all of these three screws, exposing the small circular hole. This is where the wires are going to be inserted. We will begin with the red wire, which I am placing into line one. Once the wire is inserted, you will tighten the set screw to secure the wire in place. Now that it is secure, we will do the same for the white and the black one. Again, the white one going to the hole marked with the ground symbol. Now that it's all wired in, we will pull the wires back through and start to secure the bracket back into the cover. If you're wondering which orientation you should put the cover in, just take a look back at the prongs. The flat one is here, and so we want the cover, the bottom of the cover, to either face up or sideways as not to block the port. So I always put the flat one to the top or with the, with the opening of the cover and you just slide it back into place and it should sit securely. Now we will take our rubber cover from earlier, place it back over, so now that the cover can't fall out. Now we will take that and slide it back over the prongs and we will take our rubber ring and slide that back into the top hole. followed by the metal washer and the grommet from earlier and we will just screw this back on. Last step is just to screw in the set screw from earlier. Now that we have all the wiring secured, the last step would just be to put a 110 volt plug on this end. That way you can plug it into a timer along with the 110 volt plug of the pump. That way when the timer goes off, both the pump and the solenoid valve will turn off at the same time and seal the inlet. We're gonna start assembly from the filter all the way to the pump inlet. Here we have our two stage filter. As you can see, the two filters are here. They are both wrapped in plastic, so please remove that plastic before you start assembly. You can easily remove these two plastic pieces here. These will allow the filters to come loose, remove the plastic. We also have this wrench, just in case they are too tight for hand loosening. On this side, on the inlet, which is marked on the very top, we have a three-quarter garden hose. And on this side, it is also three-quarter, but you are supplied with a three-quarter to half-inch fitting. That way your half inch threaded hose can thread on to the filter. We are going to start assembly. We're gonna move this filter over just so it's a little bit more out of the way. And we are going to begin with our half inch thread here. Now, as you can see, we have a female thread on this solenoid valve as well with an arrow pointing from in to out. We want to connect these two using the half inch male to male fitting that also comes with your unit. Now we are going to want to use Teflon tape, uh, so simply take your Teflon tape, wrap a thin layer around your threads, break it off, and screw it on to the 
outlet of the filter. Now that this fitting is on, we will connect it to the solenoid valve. Simply take the fitting and twist your solenoid valve on. And now everything is connected there. We will begin connection to the inlet filter on the pump. You would have also received another three quarter to half inch fitting. This will screw onto here eventually, but first we will te put Teflon and screw it onto the solenoid valve. All right, now that we have everything from the filter to the pump all connected together using Teflon tape, we can attach it to the inlet of the pump where we don't need Teflon because there is a rubber gasket for sealing. Just again, double check that the solenoid valve is pointing from the filter to the pump. Now we will connect it to the pump and luckily enough the inlet on this can spin freely so it makes it much easier to connect last. Now that everything is hand tightened you just want to go over with your 24 and 22 millimeter wrenches and tighten everything back up. Now that everything is tightened on this end, everything on the inlet side is complete. We can move on to preparing the pump by simply removing the red cap on the top. Just one quick turn of a wrench and then you should be able to loosen it by hand very easily. This is a shipping cap. We are going to want to replace it with the vented oil cap. As you can see here, there is a vent for the oil vapors to come out of the oil and keep everything circulating. If you do not replace this cap, the oil vapors will be stuck in this chamber and eventually push the oil seals out of the pump. Here we have the dipstick, which you can remove. Once removed, very short, but you can see your oil levels must be within there. Now that our oil caps are in place and we have switched them out and the oil levels are correct, we will begin assembly of the outlet. Now here we already have our pressure gauge set up, but just like before, sometimes this top cap is difficult to remove, so you take the one that's currently on there off by removing this fitting, slide the new one on, put the fitting back on, and then you'll be able to put on the pressure gauge. Now that the pressure gauge is on, we will insert our 3 8 slip connector with a 3 8 female NPT thread, which is the beginning of your line. Just like every other thread with no o-ring, we will apply some Teflon tape, and then we will screw on the fitting. Now that we have completed the setup of the inlet and the outlet on the pump, we can begin assembly of our misting tube and nozzles. Now, this is gonna be completely customizable to you on how you wanna set it up, but as long as we use all 10 and all 20 nozzles of the respective kits, then we can maintain ideal conditions. Here we have one small section of the misting line that you will receive. It is simply a tube. We will take it to the front and we will add it simply by pushing it in. And because they are slip connectors, you simply push here one click, two clicks, and now it is solid. So you just wanna pull back, make sure that it's secure, and now you have the beginning of your line. It's that easy. All right, we're gonna quickly go over the slip connectors just because they can be a little confusing. Uh, I have two one foot lengths here, but you're gonna want at least two to three feet between each slip connector. Um, so you will start the line with this piece here. This is your 3 8 two slip connector. Simply slide it in, one click, two clicks, pull, and now it's secure. And so next, you're going to move over to your first slip connector. Then you will just slide it in one end, one click, two click, pull, secure. Now that that's secure, you can start inserting your misting nozzles. And you're gonna to wanna to use all 10 for your 10 piece and all 20 for your 20 piece kits. Now that we have that inside inserted, we can do one click, two click, and we are going to skip ahead to the end of the line, uh, just to save you some time. Again, this one doesn't have a, a hole at the end, it is just a slip connector and a spot for a nozzle. So you're gonna click that on, make it secure, 
Grab your last of the 10 or 20 nozzles. Place that in. And now you're set. Now you are ready to start spraying with your misting setup. One last note, we have added a plug, one ten volt plug to the solenoid valve. Uh, you can have this hardwired however you want to switch. We recommend a one ten volt plug to go along with the one ten volt plug of the motor. Uh, that way you can plug them both into the same timer and then they can turn off at the same time. Should you not want to set up a timer with the solenoid valve, then you can simply remove the solenoid valve or just don't install it in the first place and the pump will function uh, as normal. You will simply have to turn off the water source to the filter so that water doesn't drip from the nozzle we set up. That is how you put together the 10 piece and 20 piece misting kits. Uh, thanks for watching and if you need to know how to set up the solenoid valve, please visit our other videos.